Hi. I'm Rekha. I'm here to present uh, about memory semantic SSD. I'm uh, on behalf of Samsung. I manage uh, our R&D team at Memory Solutions Lab, working on next generation memory and storage devices. Uh, today, I'll mainly talk about the memory semantic SSD and why we built the industry first CXL based NAND flash SSD. So what is Compute Express Link? You would have already heard about it from some people, and there was also a forum on Thursday to learn more. So I'll quickly go over it. What it does is provide a common memory space across the devices, multiple system components that are present in the server, uh, and provides the cache coherency protocol and the intercon interconnect so that the memory across all these different devices are open to all the devices. Right, so there are typically, you'll hear about three types of devices, type one, two, and three. And type one is where uh, it's about a compute device. The type one device is a compute device, which has a cache to access the memory that's exposed by other devices. And type two does not just that, but it also has its own memory that is exposes to the external uh, system and the devices, other compute devices to access on. And the type three is typically a memory buffer that does not have its own cache uh, for the compute, but what it does is have a memory system, memory uh, devices that it exposes to the other components in the, uh, in the system. So even though you hear about all these three, you'll see a pattern when you hear about CXL and uh, look at all the different talks and, uh, throughout that there is a general excitement, more excitement over the memory expansion. So that's going to be the use case that first comes across. And uh, what it enables is uh, today, what you will have to do to expand memory is to actually go over the CPU and uh, have another node, and even if you want, go over network and have other nodes in the system, and the memory from these nodes have to be accessed uh, with a latency delay, right? So, and that's not the typical uh, best scenario, use case scenario, and because most of the modern workloads are requiring large memory than what is available with the dim slots based expansion. So, what CXL enables with the memory expansion is you can use the PCIe slot, right? So now that's the PCIe or CXL slot to do a local memory expansion. That's the CX, direct CXL memory expansion you see here in the same server. And also go over CXL switch, multi-level switches, to go over to a pooled memory CXL memory expansion, right? So that could be from separate memory devices that's specifically in the system for uh, connected to the switches for the sake of pooling, or it could be from other servers. So uh, we are also very actively part of the uh, future technology initiative, software defined memory uh, work stream, and this is another main reason uh, for the work stream, and we are getting into the project itself. The work stream has graduated into a composable memory systems uh, project, sub-project, and the server, and you can engage more on how these memory expansion and what the characteristics, uh, what are the requirements from the uh, applications and how should these devices be that enables these memory expansions. So we do provide, uh, so at Samsung, we do have CXL-based DRAM memory expanders memory expanders available, and we do have a pooled memory solution also available. There's going to be a separate talk during the CXL program, and you can also learn more during the at the demo booth. But why are we looking beyond DRAM, and why are we going into NAND for CXL-based memory expansion? Typically because due to TCO concerns and due to the DRAM density not typically scaling enough as much as the uh, data needs are, so uh, most of the time, NAND is needed to supplement and expand and to keep up with the demands, right? So the NAND scaling has been much better than the DRAM scaling alone. And even with these available, the TCO might not uh, always uh, uh, 
be good enough for just a DRAM based expansion. Right? So, uh, memory semantic SSD for the age of AI. Right? So, what you do see here is the AI models keep growing, the memory needs of these models keep growing, but the uh, accelerator memory inside the accelerator alone is not growing enough. So they have to expand beyond the accelerator and go into the system memory. And that's another reason for the interest in the CXL-based uh, memory expansion. And what you do see here is the NAND flash for typical applications, that's traditional applications that want to access through normal I.O. can use the uh, device, this memory semantic SSD dual mode device, through as an NVMe SSD and access through a file system as they always do. But at the same time, for the age of AI, right, so these applications typically access in a much smaller granularity than what the normal I.O. does. What we provide here is the, NAND the data from the NAND flash is now cached in a DRAM cache inside the device and is accessed through the CXL memory protocol in a much smaller granularity directly. The compute can now, through cache currency hardware paths, directly access it without having to go through the software. So uh, what does that help? with is to avoid the unnecessary data copies and the data movements in the system. So in conventional solutions, how you expand memory with NVMe SSD is through uh, I.O. swapping. And what you'll have to bring into memory is to have to be brought into memory first. What you need to access needs to be swapped in, brought into memory first before the applications can access it. But what memory semantic SSD enables is the entire NAND space is now exposed as memory, so memory space, right? And there is a DRAM cache inside the device itself for uh, better lower latency access for the hotter data there. But for the ones that will have to be missed, you don't have to copy it into a DRAM like how you would do in a traditional system, or you don't have to read in a bulk manner and swap into DRAM or move data away that you will typically have to do with the traditional systems. So these data copies and data movements and the software overhead, uh, reduction of the software overhead brings a huge benefit to the system. So the TCO, uh, this, what I just explained, is not for a general purpose memory expansion use case scenario that is typically served by DRAM, right? So this is a TCO optimized, TCO constrained system and for the benefit of the applications that are already looking into SSD-based memory expansion and can tolerate the higher latency. Right, so here, for example, I showed two cases from Meta, uh, what they have published before. Right, so the, in the top, you, what you see is DLRM recommendation system, and uh, where the embedding tables are growing into terabyte scale, and they are typically stored in SSD and cached in DRAM, and there is uh, very hot embeddings in the accelerator memory. And for the in the bottom, what you see is the caching work workload, uh, Four different systems employed at uh, Meta, and all of these are using SSD to supplement the memory expansion. But they are all paying the I.O. tax, the software overhead, and have all having to read more data than what they need just because they have to access in blocks in the traditional system. But what we provide here is to uh, enable smaller granularity access directly without avoiding the data copy movements for these systems. So what we envision is that the applications will be able to have better control over the data movement just by uh, changing their, the method of access uh, to the data stored in the SSD. So if they are doing file-based access, traditional I.O., that happens in bulk, that can directly use the NVMe path and we uh, use the traditional command processing software uh, stack. But at the same time, if they want to actually uh, forego that and use the internal cache for the kind of data in smaller granularity, what they can do is memory map the same file and they can access directly uh, through the load store instructions once it's memory mapped. 
unlike the traditional memory map where behind the scenes it will still be IO based accesses, we have made changes so that a memory map to a memory semantic SSD is direct load store through the CXL cache currency protocol. So uh, what this enables is also, uh, let's say, imagine a CXL-based accelerator that has its own memory space also divided into uh, cache space to what is being stored in the SSD and also a memory space segregated. Right, so the accelerator can decide if it's a, if its memory space is something that it wants to expose to as a HDM through CXL or not, whether it's private. And it can also decide, and even the application can will be able to decide which how much portion of it is needed for their access needs. And this way, the application programmer can have direct control over whether fine-grained, coarse-grained, or bulk data movement is needed for the kind of applications that they are working on. So uh, we provide two options here. First is the dual mode option that I had talked about. Right? So the first is uh, the NAND uh, has uses the NVMe through the .io protocol with a file system based access. That's the legacy system. And there is a cache controller and a DRAM on top of that. And that is being used uh, for the .mem access, load store access for memory mapped files. So in addition, but uh, what about uh, small, write heavy uh, uh, metadata kind of workload that's looking for persistent memory kind of support, right? So uh, that's the use case that we are presenting for the persistent memory mode is let's say you're accessing metadata or low latency IO or logging or indexing, things like that. How do you, what we do provide in this option is only the DRAM space is exposed as memory, not the NAND space. Right, so the uh, DRAM space is where all your load stores go to. And there's an external connector, uh, power supply connector, which can be used to, with the optional battery or external power supply that the uh, customer wishes to provide. Right? And only during the need of uh, power, uh, a GPF based signal, then the uh, for persistency purposes, it will be moved to the data, will be dumped to the NAND and then restored back to DRAM. Other than that, uh, most of the accesses will directly go only to the DRAM. Right? So these are the two options that we are providing. To learn more about these options, to look at the uh, demo that we are providing, you can come talk to us in the demo booth, the, in the Samsung booth, and also provide your inputs and what is the use case that work, that's needed for your uh, applications. So finally, to summarize, the memory semantic SSD is, uh, provides dual mode support where NVMe IO mode and CXL based memory mode is uh, available for the same data that's stored in the SSD and smaller granularity access is enabled through CXL protocol and the hardware uh, based access enables uh, red reduction of data copies and uh, software overhead reduction. And finally, the persistent mode support provides NB dim like operation with internal DRAM and NAND flash. So also check out our uh, booths for the product demonstrations and to learn more. We also have an executive talk at three to learn about the impact of CXL to our products. And like I said before, we have the SDM session tomorrow at uh, after 2.30, which is going in, uh, getting graduating into a composable memory systems. So come join us to contribute or provide your uh, feedback. And also attend the CXL forum to learn more about CXL and about uh, uh, DRAM-based memory pooling solutions. There's a separate talk on that as well on Thursday. That's it. Thank you.